So, Percy, how are you, sir? Good to see you. Hey, man, what's going on? Not much. How you been? I've been doing uh, doing pretty good. A little nervous about tonight. You know, I don't know. I mean, uh, you're not going to do like the Barbara Walters thing and get me crying or anything, right? Well, that was the... See, now you ruined it. I was going to go for the whole Oprah and do the dramatic pause. Well, be like the... Well, wait a minute. Is it young Oprah giving away cars and motorcycles or old... No, I was going to go with the 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 uh, Meghan Markle. Were you silenced or silenced? You know, be real dramatic yeah. in my speech. You know, the, the thing is, when I was pregnant, um, you know, my family <laughs> didn't give a shit about what the kid. No, and no. How yeah. did you feel about losing your royal title? Uh, well, you know, uh, it, it it kind of bugged me at first. You know, <laughs> I, you know, I I was used to people, uh, you know, referring to me as as uh, Sir Knight Percy. And, um, you know, I could walk into a room and people would like back up and bow. And that was, that was kind of cool. Yeah. You had all the puff daddy parties, you know, (laughs) whatever. Whatever. what are you going to do? Right. Yeah. Now I have to resort to things like, Oh, hang hang on. Let me get, uh, let me get my, my Cox light going. Oh, look at that. That's my, that's my Cox light. I saw you had Tony Cox on recently. People, I got to step my game up. I just got a blank wall. Now you're making me feel bad does, about myself. Does that make me look beautiful? It does. Wow, well, you were oh, beautiful you before, but you yeah, know. There you go. All right, boy. This is yeah. All right. So <laughs> now that we've gone over the tragic end of Percy's royal uh, royalty, <laughs> so uh, for those of you that don't know Percy, Percy, give it, give us the elevator pitch. Because if anybody can give it, it's you, sir. Actually, you know, it's funny. I don't have one. No. Um, no Grew up I'm in a Percy. small village with a dream. I did. You know, I was I was born a, a small, young village idiot. Uh, <laughs> no, so I'm Percy from being here now with Percy. Um, yeah, I started my channel it's like two and a half years ago or so. And um, I don't know, maybe, well, you're a YouTuber, too. I mean, maybe I'm not the only one, but, you know, my channel started out to be about one thing and it's kind of morphed over the over the years. And, um, you know, now it's kind of about whatever I'm doing that day and life in general and having fun and being in the moment. Um, a lot of fat Bob content because I have a fat Bob. I have like the fat Bob. I think the best fat Bob on the YouTubes. I, I would. Uh, yes. I'm not convinced you rode that bike when we came to see you. I, I, I'm convinced you chair with that in that bike's pristine. Oh, yeah. No. I have a feeling well, there was like a trailer right over on the other side of the parking lot. You just rolled out. No, nah, dude. She is not a garage cleaner. That bike is uh, tight. I've got 20, just right <laughs> under 22,000 miles. Uh, wow. It's a 2019 Fat Bob 114. I've done a ton of custom work on on that bike. Um, and yeah, if you get it, you know, she's like me. She's, she's, you know, getting up there and she's fat and got cracks. <laughs> Yeah, you know? <laughs> but from a distance, we look pretty. We look pretty sharp, I think. And you've done some motor work, right? Stage two, at least. I I, yeah, yeah. I've done. Um, I've got full stage two. I just did the two in one exhaust with the uh, nice. the TBR Comp S for the uh, the trip that we just took out to the Badlands. And yeah, I'm still trying to get used to that. That's that that changed the riding characteristics of the Fat Bob quite a bit. Oh, um, sure. So what got you? So what got you into the whole uh, black hole of YouTube? Yeah. So if you looked at some of my earlier stuff, I kind of talked about that uh, a bit. You know, I was was in a. It was kind of a lot of things came together about the same time. I was in a, a fairly bad place in in life, uh, <laughs> mostly professionally, but it was causing a lot of problems. And, um, I was pretty much, you know, I had an epiphany. Watch some of my earlier videos. Mm-hmm. I talk about kind of what happened uh, as I was on this train ride, literal train ride, and uh, decided that, you know, I needed to, to get back in the moment and take control of my life and, and make changes because I was, I was pretty sure I was headed for an early out mm-hmm. um, the way things were going. And I decided to, to get back on a bike. And as I was doing a lot of YouTube research, um, trying to figure out what direction I wanted to go on a bike, I started watching some uh, motovloggers. Uh, Great Egret, Joe, mm-hmm. was you know one of the first ones that I kind of like connected with. Um, Dan Dan the Fireman, 
back in the old days before he you know started the current trend that he's on where he was spending a lot of time talking not just about motorcycling but uh about life in general and men's mental health and and things and that resonated with me and uh rosie gabriel i don't know if you know mm -hmm. if you've seen rosie she's uh she does she her things like solo adventure riding over okay. months in different parts of the world and uh, very vulnerable. She puts herself out there and all that stuff resonated with me. And, you know, I told my wife, I said, shoot, Miss Percy, I think I could do this, you know? And, and I reached out to, to Joe and we kind of talked over email. Uh, and I was looking for a creative outlet, not just to get creative stuff out there, but I was also looking for a way to kind of talk through the stuff that I was going through. Yep. Um, and do it in a way that wouldn't expose myself or people that I cared about um, to any potential backlash or whatever. So that's why I decided to adopt one of my many personas I've had over the, the years, mm -hmm. uh, Percy Thrillington, and um, just jump into YouTube and celebrate being here, you know, and see if there were other people out there that were kind of in the same place in life that I was. That's awesome. I think there's something really uh, strangely therapeutic. I wanted to do a vlog on this, and I haven't done a vlog in forever, but I think there's something very therapeutic about talking to a camera. I don't know what it is, but it's just in your helmet. You can get, you can solve anything. You can yeah. just sort of just get it out there. Well, it's for my personality type. Um, we we tend to talk through things anyway, mm -hmm. right? That's how I I process is to kind of talk through and different aspects and different perspectives on things. So for me, it was just a natural, we'll just turn the camera on. Right. And, okay. and there's, there's, there's nothing. I mean, this isn't like, this isn't my life. If this thing fails, learn from it and go do something else. So, you know, that, that really, if you take that attitude, it gives you a lot of freedom, mm -hmm. right? When you, when you don't really care so much about the criticality of the outcome, you take a lot more risk and you just put yourself out there. And that's, that's kind of how my channel started. Um, and that's pretty much what it is today. It's just, they just doing whatever's going on that day. Yeah. There's a, there's definitely a lot of freedom in not caring <laughs> because like you yeah. said, if you're, if you're being true to yourself, it's still a good day. You know, if a video does, crazy that's great but if it doesn't and you're happy with it then that's okay i think yeah, too many people too many people get absorbed in those numbers and you know what does that number really mean you know what i mean i, I feel like there's this attachment of people think that that's a verification of good work and is it i don't know yeah i mean that's yeah you definitely can go down that rabbit hole right of looking at and, and i will admit the first i don't know several months i was kind of like looking at trying to understand the numbers um, and I was getting a little frustrated because I would try to manipulate or try to get a specific result and couldn't get it. And I couldn't figure out why not. And that's when I kind of stepped back again and said, Hey, I'm taking this way too seriously. I mean, at the end of the day, I, this isn't a job. It's never going to be my job. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate because I'm at the point right now with my small little bitty channel where my operating expenses are covered. Yeah. That's all I need. <clears throat> Right. I don't, I don't need like this massive stream of, of revenue. Um, so, yeah. So that's, you know, and, and I, think, with it. I think that that's um, I think that's positive. I was watching the interview with the CEO of YouTube and they were talking about creator burnout and about how everyone's trying to figure out the the mythical unicorn of the algorithm. And I laugh because every time I check when I should release a video in the studio, it tells me a different time every every week. It's a different time on a different day. Yeah, I'm like this. This, this is just stupid. I'll just I, I put up posted notes on my computer, and that's what I stick to. It's like you know what? If it fails, it fails. <laughs> yes, yeah, but if, if you step back, like I don't know, maybe I don't know if you see the same thing on your channel. But when I step back and I look at at overall the lifetime, and and I actually did this recently, just kind of look to see what the different growth rates were. I've been pretty steady at the same growth rate since I started, no matter what I've done, right? Mm -hmm. It's just all, and if I don't do anything, it still stays there, <laughs> right? Yeah, I, it, I know how many subscribers I'm gonna get every month. You know, I, I know what my views are gonna be and no matter what I do, that rate of growth just, just continues and, you know, it's steady and normal.
Yeah, I, I think it's a shame because they, I think that there's a lot of people that are getting caught up in making it, like you said, a business when, you know, and, and I'm at a different point in my life than other people, especially in their 20s. But to me, this is therapeutic. Like, that's the whole reason I started the interview series is I just wanted to talk to people, you know, and I just yeah. wanted to find out about them. And I, I for the first time, I'm going to change the release time since this started. But yeah, if you if you start chasing it, you're just chasing something that you're never going to catch. Yeah, and it becomes a grind. If it's something you have to do, it it becomes a grind. And I've been there at a couple of points where I just I'm like, man, I don't have anything edited. I don't I don't have. I mean, I've got a lot of content. I've got more footage shot than I'll ever use, flat out. But I haven't gone through and, and done the editing, and then I've kind of forced myself right to set down and it's not fun i enjoy editing when i don't have to do it you know and then it, but then i always get to the same spot where I, I just have to remind myself look like today i dropped a video today on tuesday now the rule is you have to be consistent same date mm -hmm. same time so i do mondays and fridays but sunday night i didn't want to i didn't want to finish anything i just whatever i'm just going to do it tuesday yeah and you know what the numbers are exact same as they would have been if I were dropping on my Yeah, you know, and that's that. That's the thing I thought was interesting in the interview. It's like, oh, but we've done, you know, statistical analysis that, you know, only a YouTuber or Google could do. And, you know, we've determined that if you take a break, everything's okay and this and that. And then you have, you know, these people that are, you know, killing themselves because they, they're, they're a slave to it. You know, everyone wants that, you know, mythical... 100 200 300 000 followers and it's like you know it's just, yeah yeah and i mean well, let, me you, ask, let me ask you this do you take how many times do you take the camera off your helmet and just go riding without the help without the camera are you there yet yeah i ride more without the camera than i do with because most of the stuff that i've been concentrating on is doing this series and like installs and stuff like because the review stuff i enjoy i i actually enjoy that although it's hella hard to film some days yeah um, I find there's a freedom in not having the camera. I mean, I took the camera out with Mikey. Uh, we went down, I picked him up in Delaware. We spent like 350 miles. We had dinner with Katie. We came back home. I rode him back into Delaware. I shot all this footage and I'm looking at it and I'm like, you know, I'm riding and I'm worried about the camera. It's like, this takes the fun out of it. You know, it's yeah. not, I, I'm afraid that there's a generation of riders that aren't, that are going to live vicariously through YouTube and not be lost in the moment. Like I have these, everyone probably has a different thing for it, but I, I have these thing I refer to as God moments. It's those moments like when, you know, you're alone and you're at peace and you're, you, yeah. just, you have that overwhelming feeling of just freedom. And, yeah. you know, when you're filming, you don't have that because you're like, Oh, I didn't shoot an exit or I didn't shoot an intro or, you know, yeah. it's, it's so hard. And, and I don't script anything. No. I think I'm, I may have scripted out of the 180 something videos I've shot, probably less than five, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and that's usually just talking head stuff. But um, yeah, I just, half the time, I don't even know what I'm going to say. I just turn on the camera and, and just start talking. But, you know, while you're writing, sometimes you go, oh, damn it, I shouldn't, you know, maybe I, sh I forgot to say this, or I need to go back and do that, or I need to say that a different way. And it does, it sucks all the fun out of the ride. Especially when you notice, and I noticed it a lot in the early days, um, and you still see it a lot. You see people that constantly are jump cutting because they're so worried, like you said, they so they say it again and again. and Yeah. Next thing you know, they're five miles down the road, but they're continuing the sentence. And I, I think that that takes away yeah. from it. You know, there's a, I think there's a fine, I think there's a fine point between, it's, for me, it's like one video a week. Like this week will be the first week I've had three videos out in a long time. Wow. And that's simply just because I happen to have three videos. I, you know, the mental health video was just a one take shot. So that's easy. But, uh, yeah, I think that it creatively can burn you out for sure. Well, it, and it's, again, it takes away from the riding. I mean, the whole reason I got back on a motorcycle after 20 whatever years was because I, I needed, I needed that, that quiet, right. I, I needed that, that focus 
that calm. And I, and I know, you know, when I've talked to like my family and friends about riding, it, it's also counterintuitive to those guys, right? If you don't ride, you don't get it. But because mm-hmm. they all think, oh my God, how, how can you, how can you say that riding is relaxing or whatever? I mean, you have to think about all this stuff. And I've tried to explain to them, I mean, riding is nothing but physics, right? And understanding the nature of the bike and how to mitigate mm-hmm. stuff. That, that's it. Uh, and then once you get on the bike and, you, and you're like in that moment, uh, it, there's nothing else like it in the world. Uh, and then when you're, if you're doing YouTube, right, or you're shooting videos or whatever, that begins to encroach on that and kind of takes the, that moment away. Yeah, I got, I was having just a horrible day the other week and I just grabbed my lid and it was like, I don't know, checked out a work early in case my boss is listening. I made that time up, of course. Um, <laughs> and I grabbed my helmet and the next thing you know, I was at the Jersey Shore. And I was yeah. riding and I didn't have the cameras with me. I think I took like one picture for Instagram because it was this cool mural. And it's like, those are the things that I think that's like you said, that's why I ride. It's therapeutic. And, but you can get very much lost in forgetting that. Yeah. I mean, even my wife, she'll see me because I, I work from home a lot, you know, have since COVID like, like most people. And she'll see me start to get kind of, kind of stressed or, or um, a little angsty or whatever and it's either hey why don't you go downstairs and get on the peloton or get your helmet and go ride yeah. you know i mean it's uh she she understands even though she won't get on the bike she <laughs> understands that i probably told this story once before but and i have no problem talking about well, i was going through a really bad depression a couple of years ago and um i went to a new therapist it was like my second session and the guy was just a total jerk i mean it's just it was horrible experience and i remember walking out of there I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to ride until I'm physically and mentally exhausted. And I rode that night and I came back and I'm like, you know what? This, this reminds me of why I ride. You know, like you said, everything's right there in the, in, in the, it's all death assessment (laughs) for lack of a better word. Right. It's like, (laughs) let me, let me assess this. (laughs) Maybe it's not death assessment. It's, it's threat threat mitigation. mitigation. You know, it's, but but I thought it was a really good metaphor for life, right? If they, w- what's gonna what's gonna mentally break me in the first hundred feet versus the first next mile, right? You know, what's right. in front of me immediately? I have to I have to worry about. What's a mile from now? Yeah, we can deal with that then. You know, right? So when you we can get sidetracked. So what did you start riding with in the original the original moment that you you first threw a leg over the bike? When I, you mean when I first decided to get back on a bike? No, when you first started originally. Oh, it's <laughs> a funny story. Uh-oh. So the first time I ever got on a two-wheeled powered vehicle, um, I was six years old. Okay, that's cool. And uh, I was born in East Texas, and I grew up in Dallas. And, and every time I was, every minute I was out of school, I would go back to East Texas, and I would stay with my grandparents. And my, my grandfather, um, sometimes on weekends, would take me out to this little town called White House, right, in, in East Texas. Backpack may know who, where White yeah. House is. Yeah, um, Yeah. Um, and they had this, this go-kart track and this mini bike track, right? And, and you have to remember, this was, Christ, 54 years ago. Okay. So this was, this was back at a time, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that are young and don't realize this, when... Uh, in America, they didn't really give a shit about the safety of their children. You could you go do don't anything. say. <laughs> yeah, you could go do anything. And 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 I used to love to do the go-karts. And my um, one time we went out and I told my grandfather I wanted to do the mini bike. And he said, well, you don't you don't know how to ride that. Now, I knew how to ride a bicycle, but I, I just kept looking at the mini bike and I finally kept nagging him until he he said, OK. And he took me over and paid the guy the 50 cents or whatever it was. The guy put me on, I get on this mini bike and um, had, I didn't know what I was doing. So the guy tells me to, you know, push the throttle or whatever it was. So I crank the thing and I take off and I am doing so friggin' awesome, dude. You, I mean, you would not believe it until I had to turn. <laughs> and I couldn't, I, and I didn't, didn't turn, uh, went in, you know, back then they didn't have all the safety stuff. They just had tires, right. Like stacked up around the turn. So I hit the tires, went head over heels. Um, 
over the handlebars of the bike out into the, the concrete and crap that was that was out there. Um, and I was ready to go again. My grandfather uh, was was a very uh, practical man, and um, he didn't argue with me because he figured at some point I was going to jack it up enough where I'd yeah. figure out this wasn't wasn't for me. So he was hit, but the guy that owned the the, the mini car track was like, "No way, dude, you're not." <laughs> he, he wouldn't let me get back on. Uh, so that was my first experience, and then over the years I <laughs> rode um, friends' bikes, you know. And then I bought my first bike was a small Yamaha. Uh, and then eventually I got a larger Honda, but most of the riding I did back then, it was just, it was all like commuting or just mm -hmm. like local area. I never, I never traveled. I never got into, you know, the stuff like you and I do now, mm -hmm. right. Or that Volts and I do, that was just never a thing for me. Um, and then I, then I quit ride, riding and it was 20, something years later 25 years or whatever before i got back on a bike yeah let's talk about that so what brought you back uh well the big thing was just kind of hitting that point in life where i i needed to do something to take control of my life back right because I, I i was really heading in a bad direction you know every, every day was a struggle and i'm dealing with people that let's just say that that I, I live, I try, I've always tried to live my life based on a set of principles and values. And these people were like 180 degrees from that. So it, sure. it was causing a lot of problems for me personally every day. And, um, and it was 24 seven. So I needed to get back. Um, but I, it, it started really probably around Oh five. My, my son, um, bought a Dyna, a super glide, in 2005 and he was stationed in the and you're, you still talk time. to him after he bought a dyna yeah well he didn't know mikey man you know? Oh, that's true yeah that's but, that's but, yeah, you know, okay we'll come back to that though in a second um so yeah so he bought and it was, it was this was back in 2005 he bought it brand new off the showroom floor and um he was in Mar station in maryland at the time and he, he rode over and he's you know showing me the bike and he's like dad you really should get a bike um get a bike again and let's go let's go riding and um, I'd convinced myself that, you know, it was kind of stupid at my age to, to get mm -hmm. back on a bike, especially here in the D.C. area. It's not, a, not necessarily the safest place to be on a motorcycle. And then over the years, he kept asking me and I kept blowing him off. And then um, I forgot what year it was, but he, he was stationed down not too far from here, Fort Belvoir. And... Um, asked if he could stay here for four years while he was assigned because his family was in San Antonio. So he stayed here in the house and he parked his friggin' motorcycle in my garage. So every day for four years, I would look at that bike. Now, I would, I never told, in fact, this is probably the, if he's watching this, this is the first time he'll know this. I used to sit on his bike when nobody was around. And I, but I would see that bike every day. Uh, coming and, and going in the garage and it just was in the back of my mind and he was constantly on my case hey dad you should get a bike you should get a bike let's go riding together and I kept telling him no and then when I had my epiphany my moment and decided that I thought I was going to get back on a bike uh, was just before he moved back to Texas and I, I ended up actually getting a bike the week after he left hmm. um and that's when I got the sports screw, the Iron 1200. Nice. So, so how was that? I mean, with, with that gap in between, was it, well, it was, clearly it's become what you hoped it would be, but. Yeah, I was really, I was a little nervous because one, my, my wife never knew me when I rode before. This was, this was all brand new to her, you know, and, um, and again, you know, I'm not, I'm not the youngest guy out here anymore, you know, and, and she had some concerns and I've got some, uh, you know, I've got problems. I'm you know, diabetic and I've got injuries from when I was in the army and, you know, that, that, that bugged me. My back is a problem. And she was really concerned. And I told her, look, I'm, you know, what I'm going to do is go back. I'm gonna take the MSF course just to see where my skills are. And if my, if, if I'm comfortable with where my skills are, then, I'm going to get the bike. If I'm not comfortable with where they are, you know, it was a great thought, but I'm not going to do it. So I took the MSF course. I actually did the Harley Riding Academy. Uh, okay. They had a deal where for veterans, um, it was 99 bucks. 
can't you, I mean, how, how do you turn that down? And then yeah. with the dealer, if you bought the Harley, they would just give you the hundred bucks right wow. at, at the end. So it was, it was a no brainer for me. So I, um, yeah, so I took the, the, the course through Harley and the first time we got on the bike to do that duck walk. Right. And I'm like, dude, let's just go, man. Let's, let's go, you know, and the, the, the two days of practical were, were great. And I felt, I felt so good. And I went straight to the dealer after, I mean, the, the, I didn't even come home. I went straight to the dealer and said, okay, now let's sit down and let's take a look at that bike. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's gotta be a good feeling. Yeah. And, and the best feeling of all is that my wife was really supportive through the whole thing and still is to this day. And, and she'll even, if you talk to her, you know, you and backpack come down and you meet Miss Percy. I mean, she'll tell you, I mean, it's, it's, it, it was an immediate impact in my quality of life and her quality of life by extension, uh, getting back on a bike and, um, you know, probably one of the best decisions I ever made. That's awesome. So, so how long did you, um, so you started out with that bike and was that, you, know, you, you can't say a sports, there's not a trip bike because Whit Mason will call me and yell at me. Um, so what kind of riding were you doing with that? I was still a local area. I mean, I okay. never, you know, and I never had the urge, the desire or anything to like just go out and do an overnight or to ride 400 miles in a day, you know, or whatever. So the Sportster fit that. And, and I had that bike for uh, almost 11 months, but um, I started having trouble with that, with the, with the Sportster, with my hip and my back because of the mid controls. And I had been, I had my eye on the fat Bob for a while. Uh, but my dealer, they're, they're kind of weird. They don't want to take advantage of people, <laughs> you know, what? and every, and every time I would go, I would say, oh man, I go sit on the fat Bob, but my sales guy would come over and said, you know, it's too, too soon. You don't need to worry about that. You know, come back in four months or come back in three months or whatever. Uh, and then when I was finally at that point, cause they had that, that deal back then with Harley, where if you bought a bike, yeah, you trade like a Sportster, you trade it in in a year, they give you everything back that you spent right on the bike. So I was coming up, it was like 10 months and, um, I had to make a decision, put forward controls on the Sportster or check out that fat Bob. And, and that's when they said, okay, look, let's, you know, now's okay. So just let's, let's do a test ride. It took me on a ride. I fell in love with the fat Bob immediately. It's a beautiful I came, bike. Came back and, and told told my guy. I said, "Look, if you can get the that limited color, scorched orange, you can find it anywhere on the East Coast and, and bring it in. I'll come back and I'll get this." And he worked his butt off for two days, and called me up and said, "I've got one. It'll, it'll it can be here in you know forty eight hours." That's amazing. And uh, we did the deal, and he didn't charge me. He didn't upcharge. I love my deal. Harley Harley Davidson Aquatico. <laughs> They didn't upcharge me. He didn't charge me for his time. I mean, it was just, he knew that was the bike that I wanted and it was a good fit for me. And he did what he could to make it happen. That's awesome. Cause there's not, yeah. I mean, I've seen dealers that'll sell people anything. Yeah. They won't do that. And that, that was, that was a life changing experience uh, because that led to me meeting bolts, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and, and I think, you know, my relationship and, and, and meeting uh, Volts is probably the best thing that's come out of the YouTube channel. That's awesome. Because I was, was at a dealer making a video because I just put the, the pipes on, the, the mufflers, the Reinhardts. And um, I hear this guy behind me and said, excuse me, are you, are you Percy? And it took me a minute to, because to, I, didn't, I didn't make the connection, you know? And then I'm like, oh, wait, yeah, that is me. And, and turned around and it was, it was Volts. And, uh, was he wearing met, a smoking the, jacket and a big cigar? Or he was fedora? not wearing. No? no, he wasn't. No, but he but he told me he just bought a soft tail. about Martha, the the heritage, because mm -hmm. uh, he had seen my video. He had oh, that's had so a cool. different bike, and so we were like talking about bikes. And as it turned out, we were both planning on uh, going out to MMM. Okay, the first MMM in St. Louis. So these two guys who just met in the parking lot. We didn't this know sounds like a safe other. story. <laughs> I know, right? Decide <laughs> to go in the woods with other people. Why don't we just go together? 
never ridden together, didn't know each other, <laughs> going to ride halfway across the country. So we, you know, the wives met, we met with the wives, wives are okay. My wife knows I can defend myself. I, you know, I, I know how to use a weapon and I've got multiple. Um, so she wasn't concerned. I don't know if, I don't know if Volts, Volts is probably going, dude, were you carrying on that trip? I wasn't. Walter, Volts wasn't. doesn't seem that threatening, but now you got me thinking. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> but we went out and we just clicked and, um, and it was through our relationship and in that trip and us both getting those soft tails that I realized that I, I really love to travel on a bike. It's awesome. You know, it's amazing that you can meet other riders and meeting you in volts. I, I just spent all of Saturday with Mike from, uh, from, uh, Maryland. It's amazing how you can meet the right rider and you can just go. Guys laughing. We don't even have comms, yeah. and people are like, "You rode 350 miles without comms." Yeah, we did, and it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> it was all yeah. Good. I just, you know, it, it's it, it, and you can't do that with everybody. I mean, I, I think it's like I said. I, I feel very fortunate. I, you know, I'm very grateful that that uh, that we met uh, because it it took my riding, meeting meeting him, and um, the the friendship we formed and the travel that we've done. Uh, really has taken my 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 riding to the the next level, and we're we're we both ride the same way. We're both kind of laid back. You've ridden with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just kind of like whatever. We're gonna you know yeah we're gonna go here. We'll get there at some point. You know oh squirrel, let's go. <laughs> you know, let's yeah, go you know, that's the that's the thing that I think too that a lot of people get so caught up on where they're going rather than just letting it be what it's going to be. Yeah, we used to uh, we used to play when. Katie and I first got together, we used to play right turn, left turn. You get to an intersection and you just be like, which way are we going? We'll go that way. Okay. Right. Let's see where we go. Right. You know, it's, it's not about the, uh, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. That's awesome. Yeah, you absolutely. guys have that friendship. He's yeah, a stand up it's, it's guy too. Really no, what's the, um, guy. no, what's the furthest you guys have gotten? You went to the dragon. I know recently. Uh, Probably the out to Grafton was probably longer, I think. Okay. But we did, we went to, um, we went to Louisville last, actually it was this week, a year ago, this week, we went oh, to that's Louisville right. to, yeah. to help um, Tony and, and Dustin look for routes and, and for uh, the meetup that was supposed to have happened before COVID. And then uh, in April, we, we went down to the Dragon and we st I'm still editing the videos on that. That was a blast. And, and again, we had a good time because we were compatible, right? I mean, we got out on that road and <laughs> nobody was, there's no egos. I mean, we weren't trying to prove who was the best rider or whatever. We just, we spent the entire day down there riding that thing. I don't know how many times in the local area and just enjoying each other's company and, and, um, and the ride. That's awesome. So what are, what are your thoughts on the dragon? I mean, cause I, I've heard very mixed reviews. I've heard it's, it's, it's almost like a tourist trap, uh, as far as the hype. And then I've heard other people say there's other roads that are so much better and yeah, you know, traveled. Um, yeah. There's, there's a part one of the, one point in the video footage I've got, we were somewhere I forgot. And I just looked at him and I've got it on video and I was like, dude, I am not buying any more fucking dragon shit. I'm dragging <laughs> out. Right? Cause, cause <laughs> everywhere you go, it's like everybody's merchandising yeah. the dragon and uh, you know, and you're buying stickers and you're buying patches and um, the road itself was, was highly technical. Um, neither one of us are like push it to the limit ass riders. Right. I mean, we don't, it, it's really just about, just being there in the moment and, and on the road. Um, it wasn't particularly challenging because we didn't push ourselves to the point where it would have been um, problematic, I think, in, in any area. But and part of that, too, was because it just started raining when we got there. That yeah. morning, like 20 minutes before. So we weren't going to take any any stupid risk. And, you know, um, but, you know, we had, we had a good time. Um, I would say it's one of those rides that you want to do just to say that you did it. Okay. But the rest of the time we were there, the roads like from the Airbnb to the dragon um, out in the local area were so much nicer. And, and I just actually um, 
and my son and I just went out to the Badlands mm -hmm. and uh, we're riding the Black Hills and we did uh, Iron Mountain Road, which is similar, right? 318 curves over, or turns or whatever, however they word it, over uh, 17 miles, I think it was. And then they had okay. pigtail bridges and stuff. And I actually enjoyed that a lot better than, um, than the Dragon. Interesting. Yeah. So let's, yeah, let's talk about that trip. So, I mean, that's, that's on my bucket list. So I'm very curious to, uh, to hear about that. That was, um, yeah, that was in the, uh, we were probably planning that trip actually. So, so what happened was, uh, after I've been riding for a couple of years, my son retired from the army and he was working on his, his, uh, masters. And he said, you know, when I finish the masters, dad, let's, let's go ride. You know, we've never ridden together. And he said, we should go, we should ride to the Harley Museum in Wisconsin. And uh, I said, all right, you, you finished your studies and, and we'll go. And then it wasn't too long after that, that um, Kid Moto, mm -hmm. Ryan dropped his Badland video. And I was watching that and I said, you know, yeah, we need to, we need to push this. So I called up PJ and um, I said, look, I'm going to send you a link to a buddy's video. I want you to take a look at. And, and I think what we ought to do is let's just hit that museum on the way there or back. But let's keep going and let's go out and let's take a look at the Badlands. And let's ride the Black Hills and, you know, we can go out to Rushmore, you know, and we'll just we'll just take a couple of weeks. Um, he's retired. Um, I'm not retired, but, you know, I could, could take a couple of weeks off and then we can just just let happen whatever happens on, the, on sure. the trip. So yeah, he got excited about it and we decided to do that. And so he brought his bike up here. Um, and then I think it was two days later, we left to uh, head, uh, head west. And we stopped at Canton because we'd always wanted to do the NFL Hall of Fame. So it was, it was, a, it was a good, uh, it was a, it was a good time. It was a great time. I mean, I, I hated, uh, I hated it when it was over, but we, we, had a lot of adventures. We had a lot of moments. I think I'm, I'm probably going to take a different approach to editing the footage for this because I, I really, I really want the video that I produced from this to be about, um, for us, right. It's, it's about us for us mm -hmm. and the moments that we had, and we'll just share that with everybody. But, and I did find that all the plans I had for shooting on this trip, uh, went out the window the minute we started riding together. Cause it, again, it's, it's back to that moment thing, right? It's like, I, I don't, yeah, I don't want to set this up. I don't want to, you know, I had audio problems. It's like, what, why am I stressing over this? I mean, you know, we've all, we want, he's wanted to ride with me for 20 years. And, and, you know, that's what this trip is about, about us being together. So a lot of the little vignettes that I caught the moments, you know, I'll, I'll kind of package, but uh, it was, it was a great time. We learned a lot about each other. Um, he, said he learned a lot about me he didn't know. And it gave him a different perspective on me um, as an adult, right? Him being where he is in life, uh, he learned a lot of stuff about me, which he didn't know, which I, I thought was kind of was kind of cool. That's got to be really cool. So did you get yeah. to Harley? We did on the way back. Um, we did on the way back. We had, you know, we had some challenge. I mean, I, I tell you that with that trip, the one thing I wasn't prepared for, because I did the same mistake. I all, it's not a mistake. When I travel, I don't really do a lot of planning and I don't really do a lot of research. Mm -hmm. Right. I just want to, I just want to get in it and figure yeah. it out. It's just, I mean, you know, if I'm going to Japan or China or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, so I had no idea about the crosswinds. We hit, we stayed in lacrosse, um, Wisconsin going out. And then the next morning we left and we hit Minnesota and I was like, dude, look at all these fucking wind farm things, right? Everywhere you look, there's, there's windmills. And then suddenly it was like, bam. And, and for two days we were riding in crosswinds that were, um, gusting to about 45 miles an hour. Oof. Uh, I'm on a fat Bob. Um, he's on a, a Dyna super glide no fairing, which I think was better for him. Sure. I mean, he was, he was like lean, you know, I mean, my problem with my road warrior, which those things aren't friggin' aerodynamic to 
for anything, right? I mean, I the wind was catching that road warrior, and I I grabbed it many times to hang on to the fairing because I thought it was going to uh, get jerked off my forks, and of course it's jerking my forks right as it's getting caught mm-hmm. in the in the wind. Um, that was the worst thing, and then we hit those crosswinds coming back as well. But we just yeah we weren't weren't pre- prepared for that at all. Hmm. But then you get out there, man, and oh my god. Yeah, so talk about the Badlands. I mean, what 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 is that like? Because I mean, the the videos that I've seen, it's just you know. So Ryan's bad uh, Badlands video, he he does a really good job of capturing everything, right? Because he's got it from different perspectives, and I think he has the whole route that that mm-hmm. whole loop through the Badlands. Um, it, it's the roads are can be in some parts uh, challenging. They, they, they can be very technical. Uh, and this is one thing that, that um, PJ and I learned about each other is that we're, we're at different points in our riding ability and the stuff that we're, we're used to. I, I, love, I love the technical stuff, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's a challenge. Well, you know, PJ lives in Texas. Oh, it's flat. Backpack. Yeah. It's flat and straight, you know, sure. and, and he, he, you know, was, was finding the, the curves a little challenging in that landscape going through the Badlands. But um, yeah, it, it's just absolutely, it's, it's gorgeous. It, it's, it's, you're, someone said it's like being on Mars or whatever, mm-hmm. right? I mean, the, the, the landscape's different. Uh, there's a lot of change in elevation, you know, but uh, yeah, absolutely beautiful. What's um? So how many? So you sp- you did what two three thousand miles on that trip? No, four thousand one hundred eighty. Oh, four thousand. I was more than that. Down. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that was two thousand one way. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, it was forty one, almost forty two hundred miles. Wow. Um, and then coming back, we hit uh, we hit the Harley Museum, which was really cool. I bought way too much crap. They were having some massive sale, and we're doing like. The morning we got there, we, we got there when they opened and they had some massive merchandise sale going on. It was like all these jackets and chaps and all this leather stuff was marked down to $125. And they said, you know, for the next hour, you buy one, you get two free of any leather. Oh, jeez. $125. So I filled up both saddlebags and um, with, you know, gifts and stuff. Um, but the, the museum was really cool. I, I don't know how I'm going to put that video together yet, but it was it was definitely worth worth going out there for. Yeah, I mean the, the, the stuff that I saw looks interesting, but I always worry with that that is it. You know, I don't know. I'm one of those people I can only look at motorcycles too much so long, and I'm like, eh, you know, it's about an hour and a half. Okay, that's not that's right. reasonable. That's that's about that's how long it took us, and I think for me the. The coolest thing in the museum was at the very end, and it was uh, Ewan McGregor's uh, live wire, which I didn't know they had in there. And we were walking through the last section, and I went, oh, look, there's the live wire. Where's they got you? And I'm like, oh, shit, that's his bike. And it still has his GoPro mount and everything on it, you know, and his little cage. Uh, yeah, it was it was interesting. But, but it's cool to kind of see the history of the bikes and, yeah. you know, what they've done over the years. That um, man single-handedly. It's all about merchandise. And, you know, oh, yeah. I mean, any museum is, unfortunately. more. That man single-handedly broke my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> you and McGregor has financially ruined me. I just want to say yeah. that. But that was, yeah, so that was that was cool, for sure. That's really cool. And, I mean, that's got to be, um, yeah. I mean, I, I can see that as a dad being a. Uh, being special. I mean, my kids don't ride. They really don't have much interest in it. And it's, I could see that being like a tremendously bonding moment. That's yeah. It, you know, it, 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 it was. And then my, my, I had a problem, mechanical problem with my, uh, with my bike. So, you know, we're both kind of like honed in on that, but, uh, and, and I, and I will say for me too, it was, um, you know, it's just, I don't know how old your kids are. Uh, yeah. I've got two boys and you, you never really look, I don't know. I kind of hate to say it that way, but it's kind of like you always see your kids as your kids. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, that wasn't that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. I mean, we we had those you know those those moments and stuff, but it was really we were on an adventure together, and he was was a peer, and he was a fellow writer, and you know we had to navigate the same stuff. 
um, at the same time and we had the same challenges and it was, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was a, a different perspective for sure. No, was, how, everybody should do that. Uh, I can, yeah. Wow. It's kind of want to call my dad up and be like, let's go get going. <laughs> He you doesn't ride either, but it doesn't matter. We'll take a car. You know, yeah, even if it's a car, I mean, because, um, you know, life is life is short. You know, I lost my dad 10 years ago, Yeah. you know, and it's there are still moments where I just think, damn, you know, I, you should have taken the time to to do yeah. this, you know, and, and, and my dad was was the type of person that was always telling me, dude, slow down, man. You know, he was he always reminded me of a Rat Pack guy, right? From, from like, the, in fact, I've got some photos of him that he looks like he's part of the Rat Pack with him and his buddies back in the the late fifties and stuff. And he's always, oh, slow down, take it cool, you know, enjoy enjoy life. And you know, I was always that that type of person that said, oh, Dad, it'll be time for that later, right? I'm yeah. focused. I need to focus now so I can enjoy life later and <laughs> Oh, dude, sometimes later never comes, man. Well, and we both worked, you know, or are still do in the same field. I mean, that the, the IT field is 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 all encompassing. Yeah. And, and I think that that's the that's the thing that I like so much about the bike as much as I can be a tech nerd. That disconnection of, you know, I'm not worrying about who's texting me. I'm not worrying about, you know, people I am in me on Instagram or Facebook yeah. and as a creator, you run into that even more, right? Because you, to be successful, you have to have a connection. But at the same time, there's only so many hours in the day and you start that, that connection starts to get thinner and thinner. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's really hard when you have, um, it, it's like two steps forward and eight steps sideways because there's right. just more and more to do at that point, right? You, everyone tells you, well, you have to leave a comment for everyone that comments on your posts or everything like that. And it, yeah. it's, it starts to become a job, you know, and I'm not anywhere near as successful as, you know, the people that I can't imagine how taxing that becomes, you know, it's. Yeah, but you know, I mean, people like you and me, we don't we don't have the advantages as many other people that have blown up a lot over the last couple of years, you know. Um, but yeah, it's uh, and I, yeah, I mean, for me, it's the same thing. I mean, you know, working in tech, you know, we're very fortunate. We, my partners and I, sold our company um, last year or this first of this year, and the company we work with, you know, similar values, very very people focused, and they have a serious deal, man. When you when you go on holiday. You better not check email. You better not write uh, check on anything, right? I mean, yeah. that's why you build people, you know, teams and everything. So for me, this trip to the Badlands was very enjoyable because I didn't, for the first time in I don't know how long, right? I wasn't, I'm not running the business. I can actually disengage, you know, yeah. and you know what it's like in tech, right? When stuff goes wrong, nobody has patience for Jack, you know, and they don't want to hear that you're out, you know, doing whatever. Um, that's so the that, one that thing really cool. that I enjoyed when we did our trip last year was it was the first time since I was 23 that I wasn't in a tech position, even though I am, I'm not, I'm a creator at that point at, at some level. So right. I don't, and I got one phone call from my boss and it started with, I'm so sorry <laughs> to do this. And I'm like, no, it's, it's cool. Like, it's good to hear from you. Right. Like. But yeah, you forget, I mean, how many times you've been on vacation or you're at a wedding or you're at a holiday and, you know, somebody's calling you screaming because the network's down. It's like, so yeah. <laughs> can I just have this moment? <laughs> yeah, I know. I just, I just want to, I, I, I remember, I mean, year, several years ago being downtown New York, trying to have a moment with my family and getting called. And I, I literally told the guys that, like, can not I get one yeah. day? One day with my family out of the, you know, 365 days a year. Give me one, yeah. one day. I'm at a funeral. My phone doesn't need to be answered. <laughs> know, right? It's, you know, yeah. and maybe that's the, maybe that's the takeaway from that. And it's a shame. You went on your trip though, uh, that trip you brought up, because I think you, you and Ryan both have inspired me oh. uh, in my, in my next, my next adventure. I think I've set a goal that I'm going to do the four corners. Nice. And I'm going to take my time and I'm probably going to do it over a month. Um, and I'm going to hit up 
parts where you where, where you guys went last year on, on your trip up north. But I think I'm not just going to hit the four corners, but I'm going to stop and meet with all my friends. Because I've got a ton of friends across the, the U.S. And I've lived multiple places. And um, I think it's a great, great opportunity to do a ride like that and then reconnect with people that you haven't seen in a while. And um, I'm thinking about hitting you up and all my other riding buddies out there that, you know, that are on the Discord and that we're connected with and saying, hey, I'm coming through your area. Do you want to do 100 miles? You know, there's you know, something so amazing about that. I mean – you have vaults and I have, and I started riding with Mike and it's amazing to me and it's amazing to people that have been on, you know, my podcast, I think we're at what episode 20, but people that will, I am and be like, yo, if you're ever in town, just call me. Tony's a perfect example, him and Phil. Next thing you know, you know, I'm, I'm in Louisville staring at the walls because I'm bored out of my mind for work. (laughs) And then he's like, yo, come on, meet me at bluegrass and we'll go to dinner. And I was like, this is great. Like this is, it's the way the world should be, you know, because if you, if you ride, you're never a stranger. It doesn't even matter if you don't know the people, you know, that's the, the amazing thing that, it happens with all motorcycles, but I would argue it happens more with Harley. I can't tell you how many times I've been out to eat. You know, you have a Harley shirt on. Next thing you know, there's people sitting at your table telling you their whole life history because they ride too. And it's like, this yep. is pretty cool. Oh, dude, I cannot tell you how many times on, on the trip PJ and I took, people would come out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Now, it was generally, what the hell bike is that? Or is that the new Sportster? Which drove me up a friggin' wall. Um but yeah, I mean, people would just come out of nowhere and, and want to talk about Sophie and then it would lead to, well, you know, what are you, where are you guys going? Cause you know, we had the bikes packed out and, uh, we actually on the way back met, um, with a seal. Um, and I know he was a seal cause he didn't say he was a seal, but we, we noticed something about it. And he has had this V ride that I've God, never seen a V ride like this before that he's had for, for I don't know how long it's all custom and it was packed out to the max with shit. Uh, and he was coming to Maryland to see his granddaughter. Oh, that's cool. And we, we um, struck up a conversation at the gas pump. And I, I don't know, I think that, you know, between me and talking to him and PJ, I mean, we were probably there for like 25 minutes or so. And we were just <laughs> talking about stuff. And of course, we're all three of us, you know, former military and um, kind of, you know, talked around that and bikes and, and life. And, um, and then we went our separate ways, you know, and that's, that's all over this community. Yeah, that's the one thing the motorcycles taught me is that it's taught me to slow down. You know, it's like you, yeah. like you said, if you stop somewhere and every, I mean, gosh, it's crazy. Like even on our trip, it's just you spent 20 minutes telling every single person your story because they realized you were traveling, you know, and it's like, yeah. oh, where are you guys going? Oh, you should go over here. You should go there, you know, and it's I'm finding that that experience has changed me because I don't look at the destination. I'm more interested in stopping and you know, just learning yeah, and talking that's, to people. That's what it's all about. I mean, we were coming back and one of my subscribers, Mike 50 Cal sent me a DM on Instagram and said, Hey, I see you're, you know, up in, in, in the Chicago area. He's in Indiana. He said, if you guys ride through here let me know, I'll buy you lunch. Yeah. And I hadn't, I, I didn't plan the return trip. So look at PJ, I said, you know, let's go, uh, let's go check this out. He's like, you know, the guy, I'm like, no, He's a subscriber. I mean, I've talked to him on, on the channel, but again, one of these weird internet things, right? So we um, we decided our route back home based on I was going to go to Indiana and, and hook up with, with Mike, and, and we spent lunch together and had a great time, and then we figured out how we were going to get home from, from there. Yeah, it's you know? it really is amazing how much that – I think even more so when you travel, but that sort of not in a nomadic, you're not a nomad, right? You're going somewhere, but it, it's, um, 
it really changes your outlook and you, you really do have to kind of stop and slow down and think about it. It's not like, well, I went to Louisville and I, for, for work, I, I think I got out of the car twice. Once was for gas. Once was to go to the bathroom. You can't do that on a bike. You know what I mean? You constantly are stopping yeah. and you're, you're, you're involved in the weather and the altitude and the changes. And it's yeah. just such a, it's such a different experience. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. when Volts and I travel, we generally stop every hour or so. I mean, we don't, you know, we don't go for, we both, well, he, his tank's a little bigger than mine, but, um, you know, we're on soft tails. We're not on touring bikes. So, you know, it's like, I know you, you can knock out probably 900, 900 miles of a day without blinking. Yeah. Right. On your, yeah. Your we, track. we've done seven thirty and still got lunch in and we're home by just barely dark. So yeah. Yeah. See, so Sophie but, and I are doing that. <laughs> I will say this. So, so Katie and I, when we were looking at the ultra, I made the argument. I said, look, we're going to rent one and I'm going to fill the tank up and we're going to kill this tank of gas before you get off the bike. Because if we can't, it may not be the bike for us as far as like just pushing it. We've done that once since we've had the bike and I almost ran out of gas. <laughs> it's going to be really hard to push that damn thing. And then I started realizing, you know, yeah, that's great when it's just me because I like to ride hard. But I enjoy the ha it, maybe it's because it's you've been there and you've done that. But I enjoy the stopping. You know, it, it, it's nice yeah. to be forced to kind of get off and stretch, you know, and just kind of look around and see what's going on. It's always a good photo op or, or any of that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I told PJ when we were riding, one of the rules were that when we, if we decided we wanted to stop or we saw something that was interesting, we were going to stop because no matter what you tell yourself when you're on a trip, oh, I'll do that on the way back or whatever, it'll never happen. You know, so you, you can't be wedded, so wedded to a schedule that you don't stop and take the opportunity to see the things that you, you know, you might just be, be passing by. So yeah, and I mean that's a good that's a good metaphor for life because you don't yeah. and and that's that is a really good point because I find the more I ride, you know, there are days when I just want to get out of my head and I can't, you know, the demons and the the, the demons get drowned out by the bike, but yeah, I think that there's the the experience of you know, wanting to know what's around that corner or stopping and looking or getting some sort of local flavor. On our yeah. trip, well, I was so mad. We were in the middle of, God, I can't even tell you where we were in Pennsylvania, but they had an Elliott Ness Museum because it's right oh, across nice. the street from where I think the Untouchables was written or the director. There's some story to it. And um, I was like, you know, we got to get back here one time. And it's not that far, but it's one of those things that, you know, to your point, if you don't do it, then you may never do it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're, you're, you're on to the next thing, right. Or, or yeah. something's going to happen. But So as you see, so you, you have Sophie and you, you want to ride bigger. Do you have any plans on, on stepping up to a different bike? Cause I'm seeing oh, you test man. ride these Indians and I'm not going to lie. I'm a little uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. Speaking of a lot yeah. of tech, I was staring at that speedo and I'm like, dear God, that thing's crazy. Dude. Oh, that was nothing, man. Have you been, it's what's their, what's their competitor to the road guys, uh, the chieftain, the challenger, challenger. What, what well, there's the you? challenger and there's the Roadmaster, which I think is the, is the one that's the competitor of the ultra. Yeah. The one that's the competitor. I, I think it might be the chieftain. I don't remember. It's the competitor to the road glide. Um, I, I said on that because, well, I'll come back to this second. So I said on that and that bike's pretty friggin' light. <clears throat> Comes you off know? the center quick comes up very quick and of course volts and i volts is a tech guy too right so volts is there with me and he's pushing buttons and he's like oh you gotta try this you gotta try that he's like, gonna check out the tech and then he said you can adjust the windshield yeah and i'm like what he said look and he hit the button and the windshield starts like tilting and i'm like get the fuck out of here yeah I, i've never i've never seen that before i mean the, the tech that indian has on their their bikes is 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 really really nice i just i don't like the styling mm -hmm. it's not my thing you know i mean it, it they're, they're perfectly good bikes uh i did like that chief though that uh that chief was wow that was whew. that 116 engine in that is no freaking joke on that little 
six hundred and forty pound bike or whatever. Yeah, I was looking at the. I want to say it's the Roadmaster, is one of them. But I feel like those bikes are almost too ornamental. I don't like chrome to begin with. Don't and like I chrome. look at them and I'm like, my God, these bikes are gorgeous. Like I'd love to have this. And I'm like, yeah, but then I gotta clean it, and I can't clean what I got. Yeah, like, my I, bike is... I don't. I don't like chrome. I don't like Indian chief heads on the fender, and I don't like those stretched anything really. But I don't mm-hmm. like this the, those the bulbous stretched. tops of it. Yeah, fenders, yeah. I just it's just not my my thing. But all that said, um, the reason I said on that is because. You know, as we were coming back across the, the 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 second time through that South Dakota Minnesota crosswind crap that we dealt with on the trip, um, I was watching these other guys coming the other way, just eating up miles in the on these road glides, you know, and and I'm sitting here battling, and and I and I love Sophie, and and you know, but um, I started thinking then about you know I'm going to retire soon. You know, I would really love to be able to like do the four corners trip and, and, and the other stuff. And maybe I need a bigger bike, um, to do that comfortably. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a young whippersnapper right? yeah. and it's, and that, that could really, I think being on the road 30 days, um, on a soft tail could, could be a little much depending on, on the pace. So I've been thinking, but fortunately for me, uh, the road glide is too big to fit in the space that I have available in my garage. You just got to build a bigger garage. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, how big is the front door of your house? <laughs> uh, not as big as the bat my wife has. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. This, well this played. Percy, this Percy would not. But, you know, it's funny because when I came back from uh, the Indian demo day, I was calling her and I said, hey, honey, I'm on, on the way home. Be home about half an hour or whatever. And she said, are you, are you riding home a new bike? Did you buy a new bike? I'm like, where the hell did that come from? Is that opening the door? I don't know. But, yeah, so I don't know, man. We'll we'll, we'll see. But then i got to rectify this, you know, or, or reconcile this fact that I've been referring to those as geezer glides for so long and, and the uh, the geezer glide people. You know, I, you, you just – I find it funny when people say that because you, you see it in Discord all the time and people are like, oh, it's geezer glide. Spend all day on my bike. Especially the way it's set up now with the Mustang seat, the Legend suspension, yeah. the taller bars. You can call me anything you want. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm you sure just it's comfortable as hell, man. Um, yeah, I mean that—that's the thing, right? I mean, it's—it's it's like I—I I, I don't know if I dropped the video yet. I don't know. I was talking about everything with motorcycling being a compromise. Oh, I know. Yeah, I did. I think the other day. <laughs> Because people gave me shit. I got DMs and Instagram from people who were emotionally upset with what I did to Sophie to get her ready to go to the Badlands. I was shocked. People were emotionally invested in what I was doing with my motorcycle. And and I, I, I had no idea to that extent. You know, I mean, people, I get messages from people all over the world about asking me because they you know fat there's just not a lot of channels out there that go into detail about what you can do with the fat bob mm-hmm. so people reach out all the time but uh people you know people got pissed i mean literally pissed that uh, some of the words i won't even tell you on your podcast that uh people you know call them you know accuse me of being a sellout or whatever but but the stuff that i did to her to get her ready for that that trip made a huge difference you know not as good as what you've got Clearly not as comfortable as as, an but you know, it, but it it's, made a world of difference. I think it's it's like you said, everything's a compromise. I mean, I've been very blessed to work with Avan Black and get that razor pack and get the detach kit. But now it's kind of like three bikes in one. But right. and it's and that's actually what I wanted to do a video on, and I can't. I can't wait to drop this because I'm pretty sure it's just going to mic drop. And like you said, I'll turn off my inbox for a while, but there's so much versatility in buying a used bike where that you can build it out. So it fits you right? versus the new and the flashy, you know what I mean? So it's, and yeah, everything is a compromise. You know, it's, it's my bike is nowhere near nimble as Mike's low rider S, but right. It's not really designed to be. And I'm quite frankly, you know, the only times I ever drug my floorboards is when I dropped it. 
<laughs> and uh, I'm not going to lie. It took two of us to get the damn thing off the ground. I wasn't sure yeah. it was even going to happen. I was like, you know, I tried looking at the, I've looked at those videos. I know how to pick up a bike, but in the moment, <laughs> mm -mm, nope. But that's just it. I mean, you can like, I, you know, I've got my different configurations for, for Sophie. I've, I've even, I did a video, I think last year where I just left the bike in one spot and I set the camera up on a tripod and I was taking Oh, I can do this, or I can do this, or I can, you know, see the different things. Um, the touring configuration is just kind of like my, my latest setup. The only thing I can't swap out now uh, on the fly is the exhaust, which is what people got really pissed off about, that I would change the, uh, the exhaust on the bike. But at the end of the day, and this is where I'm struggling, Bri, is that, you know, I, 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 I feel the urge to want something more comfortable, something bigger. <clears throat> But when I was in the Badlands, people were giving me shit out in the Black Hills about uh, the fact that I rode Sophie all the way across country, right, to be there. And they're all on their glides. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're all, you just, you know, it, it was, it was just, it was hilarious. Some of the stuff they were changing. I said, yeah, but here's, here's the difference. So I got out here. I took all that shit off. I'm riding Spearfish Canyon on a soft tail that's, that's engineered to carve canyons. Mm -hmm. You're still on your road glide. Yeah. Right. I mean that, and, and that is kind of why I'm struggling is because I, I really do think the bike I have and the way I have it set it up gives me the best of every world. Yeah. yeah. yeah Cause I've noticed even when I was, uh, I forget what I was doing, but I had the, the side bags off it and I was surprised how much more nimble that bike felt. I don't yeah. know if it's just from the drag it could be in your head too, but the, yeah, I mean, everything's a compromise, you know, it's yeah. the bike, you know, my bike's never going to get smaller. You just can't, you know, you can, you can throw some of the top weight off, but get rid of the top box, but it's, yeah. it's, it's a big girl. She's a big girl, but you know, for, for the type of riding that I do, it, it fits me, but yeah, it's, you know, it's, that's the one thing we, I learned on the trip is the, an unloaded ultra is considerably lighter than a loaded ultra with a rick rack yeah. on the top I, know, I mean i had that with with uh with sophie man we got that uh when i got everything off or I, even even when we were in the badlands i had everything but the saddlebags saddlebags were empty but most of the time i left them on in case we wanted to pick some stuff up but yeah going from a fully loaded soft tail and stripping everything off and this weekend i was like holy shit <laughs> i mean this bike's a hundred and something pounds lighter and you can feel it you know, yeah, and you I mean, especially that's that's the difference I found too with riding with single. You know, you ride two up for so long, you just ride a certain way, and you you're riding yeah. by yourself. Like, wow, this is a whole different bike. Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, it's a money pit for sure. That's fun though. Worst things I could be doing with my money. Yeah, I mean, true. well, probably. I'm not sure <laughs> how much worse, but it depends know. on who you ask. <laughs> yeah, right. So, would you? So what what would you think? A uh, Rogue Glide Special or Rogue Glide Ultra? I mean, you're gonna go uh, a trike? I mean, you're gonna go full geezer? So it's funny um, because you know I want Miss Percy will not ride. Okay. Um, she just won't. She had a bad experience as a teenager from my idiot brother-in-law who dumped her right on a taking a gravel corner, and she just will not get on a bike. So I've actually thrown the idea to her several times about, hey, why don't we just get a trike? Mm -hmm. I retire, get a trike, and let's just go travel. She's always wanted to travel across the U.S. I've always been an international travel guy. I think this is the perfect thing. She, yeah, she won't do it. So, um, if I do get something bigger, it'll for for touring, it'll 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 be a, a glide, and probably I, I you know I, I'm looking it, for me if I if I were to pick up something today, it would be a road glide special. Mm -hmm. I like the blackout. I don't like the chrome. Um, to me, the ultra is too much, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I think I would probably ride a, a, an ultra glide, uh, I'm sorry, uh, a road glide special, uh, without a top case with just, the uh, the side cases and, um, a sissy bar and some bags that kind of, that would probably be my setup. Yeah. You can hold and it a, on too. And a backrest. That's one thing I'll, I'll never travel again after the Badlands trip without a backrest. I can't that remember. What seat dangerous. do you have? So I've got the Speed Merchant Fastback seat, and that's okay. what's on Sophie now. But um, I was having um, 
I said, man, I was really having some second thoughts because I, I have, I have some serious back issues and sure enough, they flared up six days before this trip. Um, but I've looked at Volts had always told me you need to check out the Mustang wide tripper. That's what mm-hmm. he had on, on mm-hmm. Martha, his heritage. And, um, I found a guy in a Facebook group two weeks before we were leaving for the Badlands and he had a brand new wide tripper three piece. So at the seat, the backrest and the passenger pillion, uh, he was selling for 400 bucks, half price. <sighs> had less than, I don't know, a couple hundred miles on the solo seat, uh, nothing on the backrest, and I think 50 miles on the, on the pillion. So I figured, you know what, at that price point, that's worth a gamble. I, I can resell that for what I, what I spend easy. Uh, so I hit him up and bought it. He shipped it out and um, holy shit. What a, Volts was right. I mean, I, I got on that. There's, I don't think I would have been able to make the trip um, on my, my, my saddle and speed merchant. I was really impressed because we, we had the Harley, we had the stock Harley seat, then we had the hammock and the hammock. I kind of had a love hate with, and I bought the Mustang and I think I'm 500 miles into breaking it in. And that the backrest alone is worth the money, but that seat is just so it's so wide. It's so comfortable, but yet it's not, it's not pillowy. Yeah. If you sit on it at first, you're like, oh, it's okay. But you spend all day in it, you're like, this thing's amazing because it doesn't, you don't start getting that nerve pain because you're sinking in spots or doing anything else. And and the hammock seat was like sitting on a rubber band, which is probably why they called it a hammock. But, you know, nonetheless. Well, the wide tripper is not the wide one, which is odd to me. Um, Okay. It's, it's the, it's a little wider than the stock seat, but I mean, it's definitely got a bigger pan. Um, the the but the back and it set it sets me down lower on the the fat bob than even the the speed merchant but uh but that backrest holy shit dude that's i mean that's a total total game changer and then my my back had locked up i I wasn't actually able to get on the bike without screaming in pain two days before we left i was in but i I was you know my son was on his way up here and there was no way i was going to cancel this trip so i i uh, got some big back medicated pads that have like had like a nerve numbing agent or something okay. and um I put those on my, my lower back and then i i cranked that mustang backrest up so it kept pressure on my lower That's back like mine, on yeah. that pad um and dude it, that made that made all the difference in the world man and i i I swear to God, I will never that that seat. Every time I go on a trip from now on, we'll go on that bike, and I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons I was I was kind of fully invested. I was like, well, if I go to a different, as long as I go to a touring bike, you know, so if I go to a road glide, it'll fit. And I love too that you can reach back and you can just pull it out if you don't, you know, if you don't want to use it. It's yeah. not like the Harley one where you got to go under the seat and take it apart, and you know. It's, it's really well, different. I, but I found a, a problem because I, once we got out to the, the Black Hills, I took that, I took the backrest off for most of the time. So we were just like, just, you know, carving the canyons or riding out to Deadwood or, or whatever. Um, and what I found was that the, I could, I can, my, the, my tailbone could feel that metal slot right okay. where it went down. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that's just the riding position, you know, the fat bob, it really, set you back and, and lower um so yeah I, I don't know that i would ride that all the time without the backrest because of that yeah it's, I'll, I'll only use that i'll only use that when i'm touring i mean that's all the other time i'll have my speed virtual on. see that's when you've arrived you just change seats you just be like yeah hey, you know what it's time yeah. for theirs yeah. That that's actually why I want a special because I love the look of that special seat. Although I'd probably just buy another Mustang seat, but the I love how I love that's the one and your bike's a classic example of how you can take it and make it something unique. And and like you said too, it can have multiple configurations, which is huge. Yeah, you know you can run into a full touring bike, or you can you know strip it down. That's awesome. Yeah, so I don't know. My dealer tells me, they told me last week or week before last, they said, dude, you're going to be in a road glide next year. Just come talk to us whenever you want. We're ready for you. Maybe they're right. Maybe they're wrong. I don't know. We'll see. I could come down and we could buy them together. <laughs> maybe they'll give us a better deal if we buy two. 
don't know. Never know. That will be, uh, yeah. We need to get together again, though, man. It's been we it's do. Been a minute. It's we been a uh, COVID is uh, about as good as it's going to get, man. So we should. Uh, yes. Yeah, we got to. Uh, well, we can talk about that offline for sure. So, so as we wrap up, so where do where do people keep in touch with you, sir? So we've got the Insta of Graham. We've got the YouTube. Yeah. Oh my God. You know we've got Facebook. Always... Are you doing TikTok? You're everywhere. I don't. I don't do the Tiki Talky, man. I'm too. I'm too old for that. I tried to do the TikTok, and then my back went out, and I wasn't able. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just it's a mess. Yeah, I always have to look this up because I don't remember all my all my stuff, man. Right, the Instagram. Well, I'm going to put all the links in the, the description, so that's okay. not a problem. Yeah, just check that out. But it's B H N W Percy. Uh, I mean, the big thing is is um, being here now with Percy on on YouTube. You know, um, come check out the channel. You know, it's, it's, we've got a, we have a, a really good group, I think, of of consistent contributors to the. To the channel and your um, quality is solid i mean the the, the work you, that you put into that yeah I, you know sometimes i'll sometimes i wonder i don't know well my theory is if you like your work you're probably not that good because you know that's, a, anybody that's a, there's a lot of truth to that anybody that really cares doesn't like what they do <laughs> because if yeah. you did you wouldn't stay you know going forward. i mean it's it's definitely not my best work and, and i think one of the things i want to focus on this this upcoming year because we're starting to travel again um, in Vegas for the first time in a year and a half here at the end, end of uh, next month. Um, one thing I wanted to do was kind of use the channel to kind of showcase my photography because I've been a photographer since I was. Well, we could argue that though. Use an icon. Yeah. See, let's just start I mean, the fight. I use, we'll I, use on the Indian I, use, I use multiple things, right? But I, but I want to, I, yeah, I would like to use, I would like to incorporate more of that. And that's one of the things I found with, uh, with riding is I really intended to, to do a lot more photography when I ride than, than, than video, what I'm doing. I'd love you know? to see but, that. But again, it's that in the moment thing. I mean, Tony, you know, I got, I got him shooting Fuji, which that mm -hmm. little, to me, that little camera is the, the perfect motorcycle camera. Uh, it's a fixed 35 millimeter equipment <clears throat> lens. You don't got to jack around with, you know, zooms or options. You just take that thing out and shoot. But, I don't know. Maybe we should do that. We should meet up in, in uh, Pennsylvania Let's do sometime it. This, well, uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, there it is. It's just sitting right there. I mean, I know that it focuses different, but it's still a 35. It's 3518. Is that that RF? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I had second generation EOS, early 90s, late 89, 90s. And they put it out of the park with this and I've shot Nikon. There's no, I was only joking. I've shot Nikon too. I had a Nikon D3 for a long time, but there, uh, it's, it's just amazing. What, whatever fits you works. I am a huge well, the believer current, in that. The, the current generation of lenses for both companies, right? The RF and the Z. I mean, there's, if, if you're looking at sharpness and detail and quality, there's never been anything better. Yeah. From, I had from, a, from either company. I had an EF lens on the, uh, the M50 when I had it. I bought a cheap one of KH. I was like, man, this is really sharp. And then I put it on the full frame, the the RP with the twenty four to one hundred five, and I was like, whoa, like this is this is everything it should be. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Then you can I go mean, down that rabbit hole too. But yeah, but I'm you know I'm I'm an old guy, and I still love my old manual Nikkors from the seventies, and you know that aren't perfect and have character and flaws. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's the real cool stuff I like to shoot. Those. I had a couple Nikon lenses, manual lenses that I sold when I got rid of Nikon. I had the fifty one too. I wish I would have kept that lens. Oh, that lens that's, just... that's 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 the one lens that if you have, you never let go of. There's there's no other lens ever that's been. Like yeah that. and it, it's neat but it's such a it's such a limiting lens too because because canon had a i think they had a did they have an f1 or they had an f12 at one time yeah what was that it's it's hugely expensive if you can find it even on the used market now what is that i, I forgot what it was but i think it might have been a one two that that's still my dream is i want to get the the 35 l the 50 l and the 85 and then just be done with it that's yeah. That, that might that, that can be the subject of our next podcast, man. We can go down that rabbit hole of photography. We, we can bring Tony in and we can just talk about how like we're mentally unstable. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, we could do that. Do a three way. There you go. Awesome. Cops. Cool. Yeah, we just have to be careful not to cross our our uh, cross the streams. Field of vision, you know, because yeah. we have that ectoplasm shit come out from. <laughs> Percy, thank you so much for your time, sir. Greatly, hey, appreciate greatly it, appreciate it. So, this, if anyone, uh, please make sure you check out Percy's stuff. It's fantastic. I know you're going to enjoy it. So, I appreciate that. Awesome, thank sir. Much. Thank you so so much. Peace. Peace.